In this tutorial, I'm going to show you where to store your images in Capture One Mobile, and we're going to run through some really useful features that you can use during the shoot. Obviously, you can shoot internally to the storage on the iPad, or if you're short on space or you want the flexibility to maybe move to Capture One on the desktop, you can shoot to an external hard drive. Either way, we're going to create a session which is the preferred method for shooting tethered in Capture One Mobile and obviously Capture One Desktop. So on Capture One Mobile, we're going to create a session. So up here in the top left-hand corner, you hit these little buttons. You hit New and then New Session. We're obviously going to put a name in for it. So we're going to call it T B Paul Weld. We want to find where we are going to store it. We create a new folder, uh, T B Paul. And then that is what we are going to be using. So we click Open. And there we are, we are pretty much good to go. So the session is now created, and now we need to get our camera connected. We've connected the cable to the back of the iPad into the hub, and now we're gonna connect it to the camera. You'll see it pop up straight away here. So by default, the new images you shoot in, you can see here, the capture folder is already selected. They will go into this folder. The camera is connected, the session's set up. Now we're gonna take some shots of Paul. Right, Paul, do me a favor, just come a tiny bit this way for me. So, looking straight down the lens for me, lovely stuff. Just chin up a tiny bit. So I'm really happy with the shots we're getting of Paul, um, but what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make a couple of tweaks, go through, check a few, um, and then I'm also gonna turn on next capture adjustments. So when I start shooting again, all the adjustments I've made will carry on to the next images. So I'm gonna put a bit more contrast in uh, to this shot. I'm gonna take a bit of color out, and we can do that really easily. I've come down here into the adjustments, and I have uh, got my curves up. Now we've got RGB, Luma, red, green, and blue. I actually like to use the Luma because it doesn't affect the colors. So I'm just gonna do, pull down slightly on the shadows. I kind of go, yep, that looks good. And I'm gonna bring it up a little bit here. So now the contrast is looking good. We can double, double check it here. I'm gonna zoom in and go, yep, this all looks good. This is exactly how I want it to look, which is nice. Um, I'm gonna bring the um, exposure. Actually, exposure looks good, so I'm not gonna touch that. What I am gonna do, though, is I am gonna come down into the saturation, and I'm just gonna use this here and just bring that probably to about that point. That feels good for me. Now I have made those little tweaks and adjustments. I want them to copy onto everything that I'm shooting moving forward. So it's really, really straightforward. You just have to touch this little button down here. That will now make sure that apply all adjustments to next capture is enabled. When we shoot anything moving forward, those adjustments are gonna be copied straight onto the next capture. Very nice. And just kind of looking out uh, down that way for me. So when I'm shooting, I, especially with adjustments, I always like to be able to see what the raw file is doing underneath. So if you just tap and hold, it will then show you the original image. And then when you release it, it'll go back to showing all your adjustments. Now we have got this lovely image. I want to just do a very, very quick face retouch. So you come down here onto your face retouch. I like to zoom in so you can see exactly what's going on. You can then obviously increase your blemish removal to the point where you feel like it is nice and natural. There we go, that feels good. Dark circles, I'll just reduce them a little bit. Let's go to probably here. The trouble here is you don't want to lose too much character on the face. And then even skin, just going to bring that out a little bit like that. As before, um, any adjustments you've made, including the retouching, will be brought forward onto any future captures. So let's shoot a few more shots. So Paul, just looking straight down the lens for me, lovely stuff. Just bring the torch up ever so slightly. There we go. Just rest it down a little bit. There we go. Like with adjustments, uh, they're able to carry over onto the next images. So for the retouch, that works as well. It is quite uh, processor intensive, so it might slow you down a little bit, um, but it still does work in real time. It might just be slower than the regular adjustments. Let's create one of those masks. We've come into our basic adjustments panel. We're going to create here, up here in the layer of masks panel. We're going to then hit plus, and I'm gonna actually going to select my subject. It's going to do a bit of work. So now the mask has been created, I actually want to see what the mask has created. So I'm going to toggle this over. And now you can see that is a perfect subject selection. I'm going to turn that off. And now I am going to go into my HDR. I want to bring up some of the shadows. So I'm able to go down to my shadow and then just bring that up to the point where I feel that that's good. And I'm going to bring up the black point a little bit as well. Yep, really happy with that. So now that will copy over onto the next capture. Right, to finish up here, I'm going to quickly go through the images and I'm going to make some selects and I'm going to make some color ratings. So I really like this one and I'm going to give that a, well, I'm going to give it a green tag um, and I'd like a full length one as well. Let's go with this one. 
And this is going to be really helpful. It'll help me find them in the export process or when I'm working later on Capture One on my desktop.